The Fox propaganda machine was in full force and effect, not surprisingly, this weekend, trying to normalize that the leader of the Republican Party is now convicted on 34 separate felony counts on a Sunday morning interview with Donald Trump. Fox heavily cut and edited this interview because Donald Trump was a ranting, raving lunatic. Still, even with their edits and cuts, this interview is just something else. Let me share with you some of the lowlights of what went down here. Donald Trump is responding to a question about being on house arrest or in prison. And notice how Fox heavily edits what he says. There's an abrupt cut. I want you to watch it. Um, when it comes to the legal maze that you're still facing, and yeah. they could, the judge could decide to say, hey, house arrest or even jail. It could. You face it could. What that could look I'm okay like. with it. I saw one of my lawyers the other day on television saying oh no you don't want to do that to the press i said don't you don't beg for anything you just the way it is think of it they have all my books you know they then donald trump in a not so veiled threat says i don't think the public will stand for me being imprisoned or being under house arrest yeah i think the public will be perfectly okay with that because that's what law and order is you convicted felon you here, play this clip. But, um, so, that could happen. I don't know that the public would stand it, you know? I don't, I'm not sure the public would stand for it. Uh, with a... Uh, tried house arrest or, or... I think it, I think it would be tough for the public to take. You know, at a certain point, there's a breaking point. People ask you, why do you... You know, and that's the threats that they push over and over again. You know, they're not actually talking about facts ever, right? They just attack the judge, attack the jury, attack the prosecutors, attack the judge's daughter. And then they give all of these threats, right? If Donald Trump is convicted, the stock market's going to crash. If Donald Trump is not elected, the economy is going to crash. False, false, and very, very false. In fact, record highs of the stock market after Donald Trump was convicted. The stock that performed bad when Donald Trump was convicted was Donald Trump's uh, stock, Trump Media, which lost $300 million uh, in the last quarter and only earned $700,000 uh, in revenue. But nonetheless, like all scammy Trump things, in my opinion, is trading at highly inflated valuations. And I think that is a very obvious uh, opinion to have right there. Oh, then Donald Trump in this interview states that uh, he never, ever said that Hillary Clinton should be locked up. I mean, really? Donald Trump says, I've never said lock her up. It was actually, he throws his supporters under the bus. It was actually my supporters who said that we need to lock Hillary Clinton up here. Play this clip. I want to follow up on what Rachel asked you, though, because I hear you struggling with it. I hear you say it's a tough question, a bit unsure. You famously said regarding Hillary Clinton, lock her up. You declined to do that as president. I beat her. It's easier when you win. And they all said lock her up. And I felt, and I could have done it, but I felt it would have been a terrible thing. And then this happened to me. And so I may feel differently about it. I can't tell you, I can, I'm not sure I can answer the question. Hillary Clinton, I didn't say lock her up, but the people would all say lock her up, lock her up. Okay, then we won. And I say, and I said pretty openly, I say, all right, come on, just relax. Let's go. We got to make our country great. Yeah. And it would have been, think of it, you lock up the wife of a president of the United States. But they States. want to lock you up over $130,000 of an accounting thing. A and she perfectly, actually... And a perfectly stated accounting thing. But... You know, people also say, can you bring the country together? And the answer is yes. Success will bring the country together because I had it together. Before the China virus came in, I had it together. We really had it together. And and it would have stayed. I think it would have stayed. Everybody was, everybody was doing better. The country was doing better than it had ever done. And we're going back to the same policies and then some. Um, America and notice what Donald Trump is doing there. And this is what he did in the insurrection. This is what he always does. He throws people under the bus because now that Donald Trump's likely to get locked up, he wants to distance himself from saying that people should be locked up. So I never said that. Those are my supporters who said that, okay, well, why don't we just, I could probably show us what dozens and dozens of times Donald Trump said this, but let me show you this right here. October 16th, 2020, right? I, I could go back to the 2016 race, but let's just go to uh, October 16th, 2020, when Donald Trump said it, play this clip. I'll tell you something though, I just to lock them up. You should lock them up. Lock up the Bidens, lock up Hillary. 
Lock them up. Can you imagine? By the way, then your son, Eric Trump, said his favorite chant that he loves to lead and he loves when Donald Trump leads it at the Trump events is the lock her up chant about Hillary Clinton. Play the clip. Remember that little chant that we had back in 2016? It was Drain the Swamp. We had a lot of good chants, right? Like lock her up, that was a good chant. Anybody like that chant, lock her up? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, lock her up. We had a lot of, what other good chants did we have in 2016? Oh, oh, now we have Let's Go Brandon, right? We, oh, we had Build a Wall. Yeah, that, that was a good one. But we had Drain the Swamp. Everybody remembers Drain the Swamp. And then you have all of your surrogates out there saying it as well. Here's Marjorie Taylor Greene saying it. Play this clip. We need to put Hillary Clinton in jail. Yeah. Lock her up. That's right. We are not going to have people hacking and breaking in and spying on the president of the United States. I don't care what political party they are. Then Donald Trump whines that uh, certain people were allowed to testify who shouldn't have been able to testify. And then he says that, uh, talks about the grand jury. He says, Robert Costello was not allowed to testify before the grand jury. Well, one, what are you even talking about there? It's not even accurate. Um, but number two, Robert Costello testified at the criminal trial. Robert Costello was the worst witness ever. Robert Costello, the MAGA lawyer who you put up on the stand against the advice of your lawyer, basically collapsed on the stand and said, oh, I was never actually looking out for Donald Trump's interest. I was just focused on helping Michael Cohen. Well, that was proven to be utterly false. But here, let's play this clip. And then they indict you and they go to a grand jury and they don't use Bob Costello's testimony. You know, they use almost none of it. They, they didn't want him before the grand jury because he's very persuasive. This judge didn't want him to talk. They shouldn't have allowed certain people to testify. It was totally wrong that they did that. So then Donald Trump attacks the jury. Play the clip. Remember, Bragg didn't want to do the case. He came out. He said, there's no case. And how can you have a witness like so-and-so? I'm not allowed to mention the name. Can you believe this? This guy's allowed to have shows, television shows. I'm not allowed to mention the name. It's so unfair. But regardless, you know, you have to you have to really play the hand that you're dealt. And then you had a jury that was, you know, from a certain persuasion, would have been hard to do no matter what. But uh, I did absolutely nothing wrong. I mean, absolutely think of it. Notice what he says there of a certain persuasion. Then Donald Trump attacks all of the evidence and he goes, have you ever seen the ledger? We, we saw it all. It was the evidence, perhaps because you were sleeping throughout the trial or, um, or or you were whining about how cold it was, or, or more likely just because you're an absolute liar. Um, but we saw all of the evidence here. Play the clip. I pay a lawyer. He wasn't a fixer. He was, he was a lawyer at the time. I pay a lawyer, and he's a lawyer. It's called legal expense. A bookkeeper, without ever speaking to me because she did the right thing, who's been with me for years, marks it down as legal expense. In other words, I paid a legal expense. It's marked down as a legal expense. And they say, that's a fraud. What am I going to call it? Did you ever see a ledger? Do you ever study accounting? The line's like about an inch long and an eighth of an inch wide. You can't write the story. But there is no story. If you pay a legal expense and you write it down as a legal expense. Then Donald Trump states that he wants to end the Department of Education. I'll show you that. I'll give every, you an example. Is it every month? I'll give you, you every, mentioned, every year, every year, every year. Yeah, you mentioned the kids. So we're going to cut the Department of Education, let it be run locally. We have this you mean mess. End the Department of Education? End it, Federal Department end it other than to have a little tiny coordination. You know, it would be nice to make sure that everybody's yeah. teaching English. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let them learn English, okay? I love this. But no, no, we're cutting the Department of Education. I, I was ready to do it before. And then again, the COVID really, if we didn't throw money at that, you would have had a depression. We would have been in a depression. And when I got out, the stock market was higher than when just before COVID came in. Um, so that will be the first be doing, that will be the first department. Oh, it's going to happen. Gonna That's going to happen immediately. Uh, we're going to do like Department of Interior. There's so many things you can do. Donald Trump says that Americans who don't support him are more dangerous to our country than Russia and China. Play the clip. People don't want to be impeached. They don't want to be indicted mm -hmm. by these scoundrels who are much more evil than 
people, I, I'm telling you, China and Russia, they're not the problem. The big, we have a problem from within that's really bad. So he let us down. The, the key to really good government, where we had like Lighthizer and some of these people that were really good, it's the person that's at the top. If you get the right person, it's like magic. It's then Donald Trump says that climate change isn't real. He attacks the concept of climate change. He goes, actually, it's beneficial. It actually helps give us more beachfront property. Play the clip. The single biggest threat, not global warming. When they say that the seas will rise over the next 400 years, one eighth of an inch, you know, which means basically you have a little more beachfront property, okay? <laughs> Think of it, the seas are gonna rise, who knows? But this is the big threat. I watched Biden the other night. It's the greatest existential, he loves that word because it's a big word and he thinks, you know, he thinks he knows. He doesn't even know what the hell the word means. Uh, he goes, it's the greatest existential threat to our country, global warming. Donald Trump then whines and says, this is also just a total lie. He goes, whenever we would object the, uh, that Justice Juan Mershon would deny our objections. But whenever the prosecution would object, those objections would always be sustained. That's just not even true. The Justice Mershon granted a lot of what Trump's lawyers asked for. They denied a lot of things that the prosecution wanted in, uh, Justice Mershon did, but you know, Never let a good MAGA whiny conspiracy get in the way of, you know, facts and data and evidence. Here, play the clip. Well, when you object to something, your lawyers object, good lawyers, professional lawyers, good records, nice people. You know, I've had, I've had a lot of lawyers that weren't nice, and sometimes you're better off that way. These are, these are really fine people. They'd object, uh, not accepted, not accepted, not accepted. When the government, meaning the DA, brag, when he said something, uh, all right, good, that's fine. Go ahead, more, more, more. But the, the Finally, Donald Trump speaks about Melania and Donald Trump's like, well, all, there's all these salacious details that are out there and it's so unfair that Melania has to hear it. First and foremost, so are, are, you, you just speak for her now. She's a, she doesn't go out and campaign anymore. She's nowhere by your side. She's like nowhere to be seen at this point. Also, all of those things, they're called facts. They're real. That's what you did. I know that you know your propaganda and, and your MAGA base think you do no wrong, but when people are presented with the evidence and you go, oh, I never did anything with Stormy. I never did anything with Karen McDougal. It's all one big massive lie. It's just, that that ain't work. That doesn't work with the majority of Americans. That may, that may work with your 30, 35%. But most Americans, when they actually look at the facts, they go, what are you talking about them anyway? Here's what he says, play the clip. Uh I have a wonderful wife who has to listen to this stuff all the time. They do that for this reason. They do that, all these salacious names that they put in of these people. And I'm not even allowed to defend myself because of a gag order. Think of it. But they put this stuff in to create havoc. These are bad people. I know everything they're doing. I know every move they make. I get it. But a lot of people don't. But. It's tougher. I think it's probably, in many ways, it's tougher on my family than it is in me. You know, How's Melania doing? Uh, she's fine, but I think it's very hard for her. I mean, she's fine, but it's, you know, she has to read all this crap. What about Bear? Well, there you have it, folks. Judge, just judge for yourself. I mean, d d does that look to you to be someone who should be trusted with nuclear codes? Looks like an unhinged, unstable liar uh, to me. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 3 million subscribers. Thanks to your support. Thanks for watching. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.